Hey tubers and fams, it's Drew. Welcome back to my channel, California Pickin'. And I've been owing you this video for a little while now. Please excuse me, I just got sidetracked, but this is part two of the secret unseen love nest of Marilyn Monroe and JFK, guys, and RFK too. So all you skeptics, stay tuned because I'm going to show you some incredible stuff and tell you what happened to me that day. If you haven't seen the video, go check out my other video called The Secret Unseen Love Nest of Marilyn Monroe and JFK, and then come watch this video right afterwards. All right, guys? Stay tuned. It's going to be good. So we're out here on the beach of Santa Monica, California, guys, where I grew up. I grew up right here on this beach. Down that way is uh, the Santa Monica Pier. Up this way is Malibu. You can see in the distance, but I'm here in Santa Monica, California, guys. And anybody who knows a little bit about, just a little bit about Marilyn Monroe and John F. Kennedy knows that right in this general area is where they supposedly had their purported sexual liaisons, as well as with Robert F. Kennedy, too, as well. So. Let's go through this, but I'm going to have to break it down in parts. I'm going to have to tell you how I came upon this information out here because everyone has heard of this story, but nobody, but nobody has photographed this place before until I have. So pretty incredible. Let's get to the story. So to tell you the story, I'm going to have to tell you a little bit of background on myself. You know, on my channel here on California Pickin', I really don't go into my personal history and all that too much. Just kept it sort of separate. But I'm going to need to tell you this so you can kind of understand the story. So, let me just tell you, you've seen me do all those antique picking videos and art videos and all that stuff. Well, that's a sideline for me, and uh, but my main profession is in the architecture and design business. I designed high-end residential homes, commercial properties, retail stores, hospitality, you name it, I've done it over a couple decades now, guys. And part of working in this business is uh, when, you, when you work for celebrities and famous people, which I have, and very wealthy people, you do your job and you do it well and you keep your mouth shut. So that's basically how I've kept in business all these years. And let me tell you, I do work for a lot of other designers and architects around town. They give me the work, they farm it out to me, I'm an independent contractor, and that's what I do. So let me tell you how incredible, what a coincidence this whole thing was. I was telling you that the stars and the planets perfectly lined up with one another to make all this come, to, come together. And let me tell you, I've always done work through word of mouth. I've never, never had to advertise, but it's been slow lately. And recently I put out a flyer and I put them out on telephone poles and hardware stores and all kinds of different places to generate some, in, you know, interest. I got three calls, total of three calls. One was from a guy saying, hey, stop putting your flyers up on telephone poles and in our area because they put them up in high, high upscale areas. Just, you know, on the, uh, on the uh, luck that somebody might be walking their dog and needs some work. So. Then the second guy I got a call from was an East Indian guy, and he didn't have the budget, so I shined him on, but uh, or that didn't work out. Then I got a call from a third guy, and he says, uh, I'd like you to you know, come down and check out a project and give me a price on drawing up the house, because that's what we have to do. In the beginning of a, a project, guys, I have to strike a deal, then go measure up the house as is, and then we propose different types of designs for the client. That's how it's done. So. That's what he did. He asked me to come down and to meet with him. And I said, okay, cool, where are you? He said, Santa Monica. I said, great, where in Santa Monica? He said, the PCH. I went, okay, the Pacific Coast Highway, guys. And uh, I know that those homes are all $10 million and up. And then he tells me in between this street and that street. And I know exactly where he's talking about, guys. And it's a very historic neighborhood some of the richest and wealthiest people in LA have owned homes on this stretch of land right here. So I arrive at the house and he's running a little bit late. So I take a look around and the place looks really familiar to me. You know, I'm almost having a deja vu moment, you know? And uh, 
So he gets there and lets me in the front gate to the uh, outer courtyard and we start walking toward the front door and I said, you know, this place looks so familiar to me. I, I think I worked on this a couple decades ago. Is this the Louis B. Mayer house? And it, Louis B. Mayer of Metro Golden Mayer, you know, the, the studio head of Metro Golden Mayer. And he said, you know, you're right. Yeah, th this is uh, the Louis B. Mayer house. Yeah, these homes right here weren't there. And, and so he leads me into the door and I'm looking around and he leads me, as you can see in that video, he leads me to the bar and says, see that bar over there? And I said, yeah. And he goes, Frank Sinatra had a drink at that bar. And I kind of joked with him and I said, if Frank Sinatra had a drink at that bar, he probably had more than one. And we kind of laughed and he showed me through the first floor. He took me up to the second level. We went around, looked at all the bedrooms and stuff. And um, I saw the master bedroom and the other bedrooms. And it's a large house for its day but probably in today's standards, it's not a real big mansion. But then he says, are you ready? And I'm like, ready for what? And, and I go, sure. So he leads me up to the third level, guy, guys, which is a attic space, actually. It's not a habitable room. It's a bootlegged room. And we go up this sort of uh, ladder type of staircase, leads me up into this room that's like dark. It's an attic space. It's only like five foot six tall five foot eight and I'm kind of I'm five ten I'm crouching down and he leads me through to the smaller door that's also like five foot two or something really small door into a bigger room that the ceiling goes way up like 15 feet and it's all whitewashed and finished and there's carpeting in this room he leads me into this room and he says and there's no windows by the way in this room there's only a couple dormer windows that are opaque letting in light but you cannot see into this room and he says to me in these exact words, guys, you know what this room was about? And I said, no, how could I? And he said in these exact words, this is the room where Marilyn Monroe and John F. Kennedy had their secret sexual liaisons. And I said, pardon me? And he repeated it just the same way. This is the room where Marilyn Monroe and JFK had their secret sexual liaisons. And I was like, get out of here. He did not know who he was talking to, guys. He did not know that I have had an interest in this story for decades. I'm a huge Marilyn Monroe fan. I'm a huge JFK fan and conspiracy theorist. He had no idea who he was telling, and I had no idea why he was telling me at that moment, because I was there to do a job, and this came out of complete left field. I mean, how could I ever, ever expect that? So, you know, I'm trying to get the job, guys. There, I'm there to do the job. I'm trying not to act like a crazy conspiracy wacko, but I want to get more information out of this guy. I mean, he just told me something that just blew my mind, guys. I just, my jaw hit the floor. So I come back to him really pretty quickly and I said, well, hey, I heard that that all went on at the Peter Lawford house. And he says, you're right. The Peter Lawford house is the Louis B. Mayer house. And that's right next door, right? And I'm like, oh yeah, duh. I knew that. The Peter Lawford house was the Louis B. Mayer home. And it was bought by Peter Lawford and John F. Kennedy's sister, Patricia Kennedy, because Peter Lawford was married to JFK and RFK's sister, Patricia Kennedy. And they lived right here on this beach in Santa Monica. They bought the famous Louis B. Mayer house, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Stay tuned for that. I got some incredible surprise at the end of this video. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. I mean, it's, it's good. So stay tuned for that. Let's keep going with the story. So I, I start asking him a little more questions and I said, oh, you know, now, I had heard that the Louis B. Mayer house, Peter Lawford's mansion, and Marilyn Monroe's house were bugged by the CIA as well as the mob. And he said, precisely. So, he said, precisely. And that's the reason why they were coming over here. They were sneaking over here because the CIA, the FBI, everybody knew that 
Marilyn Monroe and JFK as well as Robert F. Kennedy were having an affair over here at Peter Lawford's mansion. And there's many stories told by many different individuals talk about parties and, you know, swinging parties, all sorts of crazy stuff. And by the way, Peter Lawford's mansion, which is the Louis B. Mare House, was known as the White House West or the Western White House, whichever one you want to say. And when JFK and RFK used to come to L.A., they used to basically go and check in at the Beverly Hills Hotel, guys, and take a limousine out here and actually stay with their sister, Patricia Kennedy, and their brother-in-law, Peter Lawford. So we're standing in front of the Louis B. Mayer home, otherwise known as the Peter Lawford Mansion, who he bought with his wife, Patricia Kennedy, and that's the only way, guys, he was gonna be able to afford this property here. As I said, all kinds of very famous and rich movie moguls and such lived on this street right here, Pacific Coast Highway, right in this little area. People like Gloria Swanson, people like William Randolph Hearst, and uh, uh, this, the, the, the list goes on and on, Mae West. And uh, let me just give you a close-up of the Louis B. Mayer home right there. This is where everyone thought that the Marilyn Monroe JFK RFK uh, affairs took place. And in fact, they did. That's where the parties were. But over time, guys, uh, Marilyn Monroe's house was being bugged by the CIA and the mob, as well as Peter Lawford's house. This house that I'm showing you was bugged. Uh, and so they knew it. Marilyn Monroe used to go make phone calls from pay phones to her friends because she told them her phones were being bugged. And let me show you. That's the Louis B. Mayer home. We got one home, two homes, three homes in between. And this is the house that I was in, guys, right there. That's really where the shenanigans went on. Sorry, I'm just trying to get a close-up of that. right there with the brick fireplace. And right, I'm gonna to try to put my finger over here. Where's my finger? Right there in that upper part of the taller ceiling is the place, the room that I was in. The secret unseen love nest of John F. Kennedy, Marilyn Monroe, and Robert F. Kennedy at different times, of course. And we're gonna get into that story because Marilyn had an affair purportedly with John F. Kennedy first and then when that was over, he sent his brother to break it off with Marilyn and he fell under her spell and had a more intense love affair with Marilyn Monroe. And anybody who doesn't believe that, you know, needs to go and read and uh, talk to the, the people who were there, such as uh, producer Harvey Weinstein and some of Marilyn's friends knew about the affair. And many people in Hollywood knew about this affair, guys, but back then, they just didn't talk about it. And so that's the house right there. Now, I have something very fascinating to show you after I explain a little bit more. So stay tuned for that. So let's talk about all the different things that had to line up. All the incredible stars and planets had to line up. <clears throat> I had to get a call from a guy who responded to my flyer at some uh, copy place I put it up at, which I'm not used to doing. He tells me to come down here to meet him down in Santa Monica. He then leads, lets me into the house that I believe that I had worked next door at the Louis B. Mayer home. When I brought it up to him, he opened up to me and he told me more about the history of this house. And then he led me up to the room and he laid that one on me, guys. How is he supposed to know that I'm like hugely interested in this topic and that he was basically pouring gasoline on a fire when he told me that stuff so that had to happen so let's talk about I know you guys are skeptical let's talk about the two different ways that you could be skeptical number one you might be thinking I'm telling you a tall tale you know oh Drew's telling us a, a tall tale he's lying or whatever and the other way that could be false is that the guy telling me this the guy who let me in the front door telling me this about the house 
was telling me a lie or a tall tale for whatever reason. Let's go through the different scenarios. Okay, let's say I'm lying to you, okay? Let's talk about all the things that I would have to do to pull off this incredible stunt, okay? First of all, I'm pretty diabolical, but I'm not that diabolical, guys. I would have to locate a $10 million property right here on the beach at Santa Monica. I'd have to gain access to this property. Two, three, I'd have to have the property completely empty of all furniture and all people as well. And then finally, the guy's gonna lead me up to the third level and show me this creepy third floor bootlegged room with no windows and, and, uh, and a creepy shower in the corner of the room with no bathroom, nothing else. I, I, I'm sure you can believe that I didn't plan that, I couldn't have planned that, and if I was there on the spot, I couldn't have thought that fast. So I'm pretty sure you know that it's not me who's telling you a lie, and I will swear on a stack of Bibles, I will take a lie detector test, and if that's not enough, I will swear on my mother's grave that this story is actually how it happened to me. Now let's talk about the other way. If he's lying, okay, people in business guys do things for just two reasons, pretty much. Not too many exceptions. They either do something to gain something or to not lose something. Those are the two motivations. So what did he have to gain by telling me this? Nothing, absolutely nothing. He was gaining nothing by this. In fact, he looked pretty ridiculous telling me this because how did he know how I was gonna react? I mean, this guy thinks that this all went happened. I mean, this all happened right there. I mean, what is he, crazy? But no, he's not crazy because I believe him, because I've done my research. And all the planets and stars aligned for me to find this is absolute fate, guys. I'm convinced and of it. I just had to share it with the world, guys. This is a 50-year-old mystery, guys. This has never been photographed, never been um, really pinpointed. You've never actually seen the inside of the Louis B. Mayer house. Uh, and that ha house is very famous. Let me tell you a little bit about that house. When Louis B. Mayer owned that home, in his dining room, he conceived with a couple guys smoking cigars, he conceived the concept of the Academy Awards in that very home, in that very dining room of the Louis B. Mayer home, which we see right behind us, that with the red, uh, the red tile roof. I'm taking off my glasses a lot off today because I have polarized glasses and I just can't see into the screen. But then later on, guys, after Peter Lawford had, and Pat uh, Kennedy sold the house, they got divorced. But after they sold the house, the Beatles actually rented the house as well as Led Zeppelin, guys. And this house has a lot of history. In fact, John Lennon was known to say, I'm taking the master bedroom because that's where it all went down, guys. That's he knew that it did go down at the Louis B. Mayer house. But as time went on, guys, the FBI and the CIA told the Kennedys that people were aware that he was having an affair and then therefore JFK cut off his affair with Marilyn and he sent his brother to Los Angeles to talk to Marilyn and the story goes that he fell under her spell and then he had a more intense love affair with Marilyn right in this house right as I'm showing you right across the way right there the house that I was in guys and they did that because the house was bugged Marilyn's house was bugged and on top of it something that never sat really well with me was Patricia Kennedy was John F. Kennedy and Robert's sister. How could he be there in LA? How could they be here in the house next door? And how could Pat allow his her brothers to have secret affairs with Marilyn Monroe and many other starlets and many other girls, guys? Marilyn was just one of a, you know, hundreds maybe who had affairs with these guys purportedly, allegedly, and this has all been written by, in, by many different authors, many different novels and books, documentaries, TV shows, movies, you name it. So I'm not the first one to bring it up, guys. I'm just filling in my own little piece to the puzzle.
it's an amazing story. So it really did bother me about the whole story about that it was going on at the Peter Lawford mansion because Patricia Kennedy, John F. Kennedy's sister, Robert F. Kennedy's sister, would have to go and actually be in front of Jackie Kennedy, her sister-in-law, and the kids. You know, that was their aunt. What was she going to do? Lie in front of uh, in front of Jackie Kennedy about Jack's uh, whatever? No, she wasn't going to do that. So what she said was, you may have an affair, but you're not going to do it under my roof. And that's when they started sneaking over to this house, guys, right in the background. I can't right there. I don't know if it's right under there, but that lends, lends much more credence to this story. The house was bugged by the CIA, by the mob. Jimmy Hoffa, Sam Giancana, those folks wanted dirt on the candies because the candies were going after Jimmy Hoffa and Sam Giancana, organized crime. And this was, of course, after the mob actually contributed money to the Kennedy campaign and then double-crossed them later on. And Frank Sinatra was the one that made all that happen, that made the whole transaction happen where the mob was going to fund JFK to get in office, and they did. And then he appointed his brother, Bobby Kennedy, Attorney General, and then that's when they started going after the mob, guys. And you don't do that. You don't take money from the mob and then go after them. You just don't do that. And look what happened to them both. Look what happened to all of them, guys. They all died. Marilyn Monroe, mysterious death. JFK, shot in broad daylight. We still don't know what happened to him. We still don't know who killed him. RFK, shot in the kitchen at the Ambassador Hotel by some guy who doesn't even, can't even remember what he was doing. Sam Giancana was also gunned down, and Johnny Roselli, another mobster who ties into this very nicely and neatly, was found in an oil drum floating in some water. So each one of these guys met a bad ending, and I believe it was because of this love affair that happened right in this house, right there, under that roof right there. Originally, it happened right there, but as time went on, it was bugged, and the brothers had to move over to this house right here, guys. And guess what? I'm going to tell you who once owned this house. I didn't tell you this before.